right, well, a few years ago, we went to see the guys at Gunther Works when they did their 400R prototype. It had a lot of the powertrain stuff dialed in, but uh, a little bit behind where this car is in refinement. They've come a long way, so I think it's a good time to catch up with the guys from Gunther Works. Welcome to Gunther Works. Uh, this is our Huntington Beach headquarters. Compared to the last time, which you guys came, I think, three to four years ago, uh, that was the original red concept car, the prototype car. And uh, today you're going to be seeing the actual production cars that we're building for our clients right now. There's been a ton of improvements and evolution since that initial prototype four years ago. This is um, originally designed as a performance car, so uh, performance is the fundamental DNA of this car. Right now we have the fastest naturally aspirated 911 lap time at Laguna Seca. We uh, did a 130.99 lap time with Randy Popst, and uh, we think that we can do a better lap time than that with some of the new enhancements that we're putting on the car. Uh, I got started this because I'm a car nut. I love cars. Um, I had an older brother that led me through things. I started autocrossing, I started racing, and I raced professionally for, for several years. Uh, in, in that time, I also went to school. I became a mechanical engineer. I went to Oregon State. And um, there were parts that we couldn't get or make back then, and then I started making my own parts, but I wouldn't let anybody see what they were. And then later on, I was working as an industrial engineer at a, at a software company. And um, uh, I didn't like that, so I just went in and took some of my parts when I kind of wasn't racing as much, started selling them, and that got me back into this. And I do a lot of engineering for professional teams right now, by meaning doing setup and stuff like that in the cars. I was brought in this project originally to do some small modifications, which actually turned into redesigning the whole car, essentially. probably know if you've been following the Porsche scene over the last decade, there are a lot of Porsche builds that have gotten some particular renown. But these builds tend to have a visionary behind them, right? You know, Rod Emery and the Outlaw 356s, Nakai San with the Raw Welt 930 turbos, Rob Dickinson with the Porsche 911 reimagined by Singer, and now you've got the Porsche 911 993 remastered by Gunther Works. Peter's original vision was to take the kind of racing ethos of the 993 RSR and uh, build a street version of it, but with all of the boxes ticked, right? Naturally aspirated, very elemental to drive, not a lot of <laughs> modern conveniences, except modern where it matters. The 993 is the pinnacle of air-cooled. Uh, it, it is the last great Porsche 911 in their eyes. Uh, and, and to us was, well, how can we make it better? How can we keep refining that? Uh, and so through, through not just performance, um, what we've been able to do on the track with, you know, Raw Sport's amazing four liter and the transmission that he's coupled to that, to the interior components with our own carbon seats, our dash, our, our floors, our rear seat delete, um, to the body of the car, um, to, the in to the lighting components in the car. Every aspect has been completely redefined to our perfection in our own eyes. So when I, when I really think about every little component, it's redefining perfection. Is yes, we've gone through and completely redone the suspension. What you see here is a rear suspension. It makes the car able to be lower and have the geometry correct. And what that allows you to do is have a car that's still nice to drive, that's friendly to drive, that's responsive. So the commission behind me is Greenwich. Greenwich is our in-house demo car. This is the, the, the record-setting lap car of Laguna Seca. We, we shave roughly 800 pounds compared to a 993, coming in at a curb weight of 2,650 pounds. Seeing how wide the, the front fenders and the rear quarters are, we're, we're six inches wider than a factory 993. This has an 18 by 11 with a 295 in the front and an 18 by 13 with a 325 in the rear. 
This allowed us to pull over three Gs in the corkscrew at Laguna Seca Raceway. The amount of mechanical grip this car is capable of, the power to weight ratio, is what made it possible for us to hit that record setting Laguna Seca lap time. There is just so much mechanical grip, I'm never gonna get to even a fraction of it on this canyon road, but like between the geometry changes, that subframe, the dampers, and all of that fat rubber in the back, it's just an amazing amount of grip. And then you add to it that ducktail and the arrow. You get to the point with this car that it can actually start setting really impressive lap times like it did at Laguna Seca with Randy Popes. I think it did a 130.99 around Laguna, which would put it in, in, in an incredibly fast category. Now, if you add to that the kind of stuff that these guys are working on now, the active suspension, you know, the lightweight, the other stuff that they're doing, with, uh, you know, they're, they're really going to smash that next time. They're going for like Viper ACR territory in terms of lap times. That is ridiculously impressive for a car like this. And man, that's sound. Okay, so what is it like to drive? It is, even with Pirelli Corsas on it, it's like, it is it has a lot of race car alignment stuff to it, right? It's, it does tend to tram line a little bit and hunt, but man, when it goes, it goes. And it's usable in traffic. It's not something that you'd want to drive in traffic, but it really is usable. This one, though, is still, I don't think it's daily driver material. I think that the next one with the new active suspension is going to be much better as a daily driver. Uh, we started out with several different shocks on the car originally and we weren't able to get the ride that we wanted out of the car. So at the same time, I'm going for performance and the owner, Peter, is asking for a smoother ride on the street, but still <laughs> demanding that we are just as fast on the track, which is a really, really hard thing to come up with. So we started to work more and more with JRZ. The JRZ shocks are the shocks, we have a very special shock that they've built specifically for this car, which is very specially specced out shock, but it's given us all of the, the ride qualities and performance that we've looked for, but still we wanted to have a little bit better ride. So they went to work and developed a new valve, an electronic valve, which is absolutely the fastest valve in all the shocks out there right now. This is gonna give us a ride, so we're gonna have the ride quality of a completely stock car, probably better, to be honest with you. It's not gonna be just uh, a, like a softer Cadillac ride, it's actually gonna be a very comfortable ride, and when things come up, it'll respond quickly it's gonna be able to sample a thousand times per second. What, what's gonna happen is while you're driving down the street, the car is gonna go into just this real soft, easy mode because there's no reason. It's not reacting to any of the things that are being given by driver input or by the road input. So if it's smooth, the car will completely soften up and, and, and it won't respond until it sees something by either, again, the driver or by the road. So if you hit a bump real hard, it's gonna to respond to that bump and it'll respond to it, in, like I said, in, in a matter of milliseconds. And, and it takes reading every, every millisecond, it's responding to the, to the sensor input. It's very, very adjustable. And this is the only shock out there right now that I know of uh, currently that's bi-directional as well. So most of them only kind of work in one direction and it has to do other algorithms to catch it back up where this is actually responding uh, in, in, in two different directions at the same time, compression and rebound. This is so fast and works so well, you could literally disconnect the rear anti-roll bar and compensate it for it in the setups. Oh man, do you hear that pop? Oh my God, so, you know, this car once in a while will throw off a pop like that and it's like, race car, hello. So Peter told me not to short shift. In this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, there is just so much to love about this engine. Uh, you know, just the way that the power delivery just keeps on coming. And, and then, when you think it's done, you get to the end of the rev range and you're just cracking 8,000. 
and it's just it just opens up and then it pops and bangs and it's like a lot of feelings there's a lot of feelings in this car you feel the road under your seat you feel the curves and the camber in your hands and you just you feel the <laughs> the adrenaline at your foot it's one thing to have a car work great for the best race car driver in the world but he's not the one who's typically going to be driving the car so we've taken a lot of input to make this car very driver friendly and both street and track so all of this was taken into consideration while we were making changes to the car um, this is what led us to having a lot of adjustability, which the car has in it, for the, um, be able to get it to anything from anti-squat to bump steer to where the roll center is, all of these things, which are kind of technical words, but at the end of the day, this is what makes the car break well on a straight line, make it accelerate well off of a turn and do everything. But we had to have it so it crossed over. And we was I was pleasantly surprised by one of the professional drivers one time when he'd, he'd been driving it more on the track than on the street, and he asked for some street changes, which we were able to, to do for him. And he called back and he says, yeah, it's better. And he says, but this is probably one of the first times ever that you made it better for the street and we lost nothing on the track. And this is the thing that we've gone on and it's been a fight. This is a fun place to do stuff. The, these guys here are car enthusiasts. They love to do this stuff, and so it's not just a job. It's, it's actually <laughs> an adventure, I guess you'd say, but it's, it's, uh, they, they really enjoy doing it, and, and there's no limits. So this is much different than the 400R. I mean, the, the powertrain is similar, has that same kind of elemental feel, but the interior is so much more refined. I mean, the leather in here is just unbelievably sumptuous. It's the stuff you'd find in like a, you know, a, a Gulfstream G5. And there's all that. And I still haven't pressed the sport button yet. So here goes. <laughs> what? Okay, so much more aggressive throttle map. It adds a lot of punch to the power band. Oh! <laughs> oh my. And the brakes just clamp it down. It's just a, nat a naturally rhythmic car. I mean, the, the, way, the weight transfer is perfect. I mean, they, that's what comes from having an experienced race engineer doing your, uh, your chassis dynamics. I mean, really. And it's just going to get better on the street with their new suspension setup. I mean, it really, you know, if you can tune out some of this sort of race car stuff, the tram lining, the, the hunting, and the, you know, the, the rough riding, you know, I, if you could tune that out when you do, aren't up here in the canyons or out on the racetrack, I mean, it'll just, be, you know, add to its dynamic range. It'll just be, you know, a, a nicer car to own. And I'm sure if you bought, even if you had 20 cars, you would have this thing out every weekend. And you would leave your Bugatti at home <laughs> and you would just take this out. You know, if, if that's, if that's, if you're, if you just want to drive and have a great day driving, I mean, this is, this is where you're going to spend that big money. Like, like you're not going to be rolling on Collins Avenue in Miami in this, right? You're not going to be rolling up to the club in one of these. You know, the only club you're gonna be rolling up to is the Sports Car Club of America. I mean, it's really like, the, the car's made to be driven, it's made to be enjoyed, it's something you can put in your garage and stare at. It's a piece of art, it's a piece of functional performance. Look, I'm gushing because it is that, that thing that we're all looking for with these cars. A little bit of old, a little bit of new, and a lot of fun. Now at this point, for a company like Gunther Works, they've been around for a few years, they've proven their formula, but where do they go next? Well, if you're following the Porsche narrative, it makes perfect sense to go topless, and the ultimate open-top Porsche has always been a speedster. So what you see here is a, the next generation of our cars. This is, we went from producing 25 coupes, and next year we're gonna start production of the uh, 993 Speedster. It's based off a 911 Cabriolet, and uh, we also feel that uh, the Speedster actually might be 
a contender for our coupe lap time as well. Peter came to me, the owner of Gunther Works, and said, we need to make this car extra special. What are we gonna do in order to do that? Well, the, the first thing was, looking at it from an engineering standpoint, is the, the biggest problem with most open top cars is they have lots of twist and flex in them. And slowing that down is almost impossible without putting a full roll cage in the car. So he said, what can we do on that? And I said, in this case, I'd like to bring in a friend of mine if he'd allow me, which he did, and who's a guy who's a mentor and a hero of mine since I've been about nine years old. And if you want to Google his name, the best picture you'll ever see in the world is this Google, the man's name, Trevor Harris and Al Unser. And you will see a picture of him sitting on top of an Indy car looking for a, a, uh, a noise in the car at 150 miles an hour going down a super speedway bolted to the car. This guy is the best of the best. He's been around forever. He came in, loved the project, and he sat down and said, here's where we're gonna go with this. And we took the car and did physical twist testing on the car. And what that meant is we, li we literally had a bar that was sticking out 10 feet on the front of the car with the rear of the car bolted together. And we started twisting it and looking at ways that we could make the car stiffer. By doing this, we've now accomplished numbers that aren't gonna ever totally probably come out, but I can tell you it's 50% stiffer than a stock coupe is which is unbelievable without adding a roll bar to the car. And we've done this in a number of different ways. So this is gonna give us a fantastic car uh, that's gonna be a cool looking car and it's probably gonna drive as nice as anyone's uh, sedan out there. This isn't just a PCH car that you drive on on the coast. There's a lot of performance engineered into it. A lot of the things we learned from the coupe are implemented into the Speedster and there are further improvements we have done that even take it above and beyond uh, the coupe in certain aspects. So we think that this is actually gonna be a very track capable car because of all the chassis reinforcements that we've done. Uh, the chassis is actually now 150% stiffer than the original chassis. It's actually now stiffer than our current coupe. And you see the uh, you know, elements of the rear tonneau uh, with the two humps. Uh, it's got a roll cage built underneath this with uh, roll bars for safety. And you see this cavity right here. This is actually going to have a hinge and a lift, a cover over this. So you can put personal items or storage back here. And um, we're going to cut the roof out and we have a carbon fiber windshield frame that we're installing with a factory 964 Speedster glass made by Porsche. It's, it's, it's going to be a performance car that is open top, essentially like a motorcycle on four wheels. It's never easy to turn a remix into a new track. Turning a Porsche build into a repeatable formula takes a specific kind of vision and an audience that buys in. Gunther Works looks like it has both. And whether you're a Porsche nut or just like seeing classics through a modern lens, let's face it, this is exciting stuff. We love it and we can't wait to see what these guys do next. Yeah.